M0FXB, welcome to my channel. We're listening to Hubnet. I've not been on any radio for some time. Yeah. Now we have got a dummy load because we're going to be transmitting. That's what that unusual looking antenna is, but it's still picking up my Hubnet node which is in this room. And on the right hand side we've got the tiny spectrum analyzer. Tiny, but saying that it's the four inch model. Uh, it does look pretty cool the way it's reflecting this uh, this sort of mesh that it's surrounded by because normally you don't have these mesh type lines. So the first thing we did was calibrate it. How do we did that? Do that? We had to use this cable here, and I'll show you SMA to SMA to connect the two SMA connectors that are where the antenna is now. That you can see just here. And then there's the other SMA and we, we connected them together and then we tap the screen like so and it's, and it's a touch screen, it's got a built-in SD card. We tap the screen, see if I can zoom in a bit closer while we show you that. And then we selected, let's have a look now, we need to find level, so we go back. See if I can just get my hand in there, stop it moving around. Go back again, we go to config, level calibrate, and then to calibrate, you just tap the top screen and the whole thing calibrates itself. I'll, just, I'll show you anyway, then I'll pause. It's calibrating now, okay, but we're gonna pause it while it does that, it does take a while. And obviously you need to connect the two connectors as well. There it is there, I'm doing it properly now. We connected the two, connect, you know, the two SMA. And it's calibrating, it takes about a minute, you see this green line go across. And at the end of it, it will say calibrate compete. If it fails, just do it again. The next thing we want to do is enter the frequencies that it's going to listen to. Now it will automatically come up at, I think at the, the range will be 100 kilohertz to 800 megahertz. So it's going to show that when the calibration is complete anyway. Notably, just if you've never used one of these, so you tap the screen, it's failed there, we'll do it again, but you tap the screen and you get menus here, but you get shortcuts here as well. Uh, so that's quite handy. Okay, then so we got it here. Now, you see that spike? That is my Hubnet node transmitting. So you can see the signal coming in there. I think you can actually hear it if we put in some headphones. I'm going to put a Bluetooth sender in that and pair it to my um, Bluetooth speaker. There's a 3.5 out jack there, it's SD card and USB charging built-in battery as well. So let's change the parameters of the of what we're receiving. So you tap the screen and go to frequency and then you can go to start. Now it's easier with a stylus, which I dropped. So we just use this, start. We'll go 400 megahertz. Or did I push that in wrong there? Start 400 megahertz. It says it there, 400 megahertz. And we'll tap it again. And we'll go uh, stop 500 megahertz. Okay, and then you'll pick it up my node again, which you can hear if I turn this up. And someone calls in. Now, before someone keys, I think I'm going to key and see what kind of signals we see coming from this UVK5. I think we'll make the range wider. I think we'll make, make the range like 200 to 600. So I'll just tap it and change the start and the stop. Tap, start, 200 megahertz. Stop. Oh, we did that wrong. So I'm just because I'm rushing. Start again. Start. 200 megahertz. Just make sure I'm doing that right. Start. Just put 200 megahertz. Stop. Uh, 600 megahertz. And then we'll do the center. Center. Uh, 300 megahertz okay so now if we key the mic now grab my this is why i've added the the attenuator because you can't overload this item now there's an automatic 
thing where it it it's it, you know it stops it from being overloaded, but it's still risky if you do. So I've got my dummy loady type thing on here. Let's just key from here. Uh, I, I turn the node off now. It won't affect the node. The antenna's here, so we'll go M zero FXB. Now I'm only seeing a signal there. 400 and 4345 what's it saying there 43452 my key okay let's do a wider range let's do from 100 to a thousand so we just tap um, we'll leave the start We'll go to the stop megahertz. Okay. We'll leave, we, should we do this? The center to. Well, we'll just leave that alone. And you see these marker things. Like there's a way of using markers where you can mark things. I haven't you learned that one yet? I'm brand new to this. So keying up again. And that's what we're seeing. So what you're seeing here. I'm just going to let go. Not sure where that signal there is coming from. This one here, the number one. And now we can toggle the marker along and it will actually tell us what that frequency is. That says 797. And we can, the toggle is at the top here. Back, You just go back and forth. So let's key. We'll move the marker to that. I think you can tap the screen as well. Oh, too fast. There you go. That's showing like here 434.7, is it? Should be 434.550. Let's add the waterfall. It looks more fun. So we'll go like so. We'll go back and we're looking for display. Look for display and then waterfall. Tap it and that comes to life. We've also got my. The ASO FP5 out. So I'll show you in a sec. Put in a frequency. Go to VFO mode. Right, let's grab this. So if we tap the screen, go 434550. Five, oh. So same frequency. I don't think there's a shift there. So we'll keep an eye on here and let's just. Push, oh, I've got the dummy load on, but I still want to put it on low power. So we just go F menu, TX power, change that to the lowest possible. Okay, I can't remember what a low one is, but that's the lowest possible. Then we'll key the mic. You can see that was my UV5 there. Just key that again. You see the spike, 434. Now, do you see there was a spike up here? So, we'll just go to that, see what that spike is. The marker. Well, that's there even when I don't key the mic, so we can't really count that one. Let's key again. See which one does appear. So the one that does appear is actually further over, which is there. It's so eight six seven. Now let's grab the bofong. Or the, keep calling it a bofong. Sorry, it's the UV five. Same frequency. Okay. Now, I'm not an expert, this is just Andreas at home tinkering. So, push it again. You've got a big one there, haven't you? At 867 megahertz. So there you are. More ex the other one I find interesting is the fact that it can, it can pick up up to 6 gigahertz. So will it pick up my Wi-Fi? You've got this thing where you can enable ultra mode. 
And there's a password, I think the password's 4321. I watched a couple of videos. Andy Kirby, there's a few videos, so thanks. I noticed there was one that allowed me to select handbands. That's interesting, isn't it? And it sort of put these shadows in. So I did find that there, there was a selector there for trait for ultra mode. So you go back. Just tapping around learning to go more. Expert config. Back. Expert. See how they're handbands? And when I tap that, they put all these shadows there. You got the there was firmware there as well. Tap it back on. Dump firmware. There's another one there for harmonic and it listed look off completely two, three, four, five. So does that mean it will show them all? Display. The waterfall doesn't seem to stay. You have to keep telling it to to use it. I know it's a bit blurry now and I'm just trying to dim it. The last thing I'm going to try is plug it in my, my what do you call it, my headphone thing to see if I can actually hear anything. I'm going to use the Bluetooth adapter. We've got this charged up now, It'll put it onto TX, hold it down and then turn this Bluetooth speaker on at the same time and they just pair automatically. And you can pretty much plug this into anything, whether it's a Bofang. Earlier on I plugged it into the speaker microphone that I've got for the UV5 and I could listen on Bluetooth on the UV5. But anyway, so we've got the jack plugged in here. We'll plug the jack in here. Okay, like so. It's sort of going to lean funny now because it's got the jack in the way. Now, all these spikes have come up. I don't really know what they are. Next thing we're going to do is see if we can hear anything now. Um, I'm not really sure if we ever can or what. You know, I could be just completely wrong. The jack might actually be... Um, oh, we're not hearing anything, are we? The jack might actually be for sending, you know, the signal the audio to a, a computer. Yeah, it could be that. And then you listen, or maybe not even listen, analyze via the computer. Okay, so you definitely can listen. What you do, you do have to move the marker to where it is. You tap the config, go to level. So you go level here and you have to select listen. Config. Go back. We had it just now. Level, I'll oh, keep, I need a better stylus. Level, and then listen. Oh! So we're now listening. I know it's loud. But there's the proof that it will listen. So in theory, In theory, if we get the right signal, so it definitely worked via Bluetooth. And I think we're going to make a separate video completely on the listening part of this. But you go level. I haven't seen the, how to adjust the volume. And you go listen. Again, it's going to be too loud. And then... So I will leave it as that because I don't want to, I want to learn how to, you know, adjust the audio. But that was a bit of a result because the Bluetooth module was doing its thing, transmitting the audio with the TX turned on. And the VNA, I now know we can just listen like a radio. But look at what, look at the bands it covers. And how many radios can you listen to all those bands? You have to buy a very expensive scanner for that. So thanks for watching. I know it's uh, it's me learning in front of you, but hopefully you'll you know give you some inspiration to try some things out. Seven three, all the best.